Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am your host, Jeff Hutzel with Automax. Hey, as you guys know, Tech Talk is a show we've been doing for a while now. It's a fantastic to be able to sit down with IT leaders from across the country. We talk to folks in all different disciplines and areas of IT and different types of companies um, and really get their perspective on things happening in the world of technology today. Uh, we've always got some really interesting guests on the show. Today is no different. We've got uh, Miguel Luzon, from, who's the CIO at LifeScan, is going to be joining us today. If, if you guys aren't familiar with LifeScan, they are the global leader in blood glucose monitoring innovation and digital health technology. They're just doing some amazing folks for people living with diabetes today. So we are happy to have Miguel join the show. Miguel, welcome. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here um, yeah. and, and good to see you on camera. Yeah, great to, great to see you again. So, hey, I have to say from the beginning, congratulations. We know you were recently nominated uh, to be one of the finalists for the Georgia CIO of the Year Awards. That's a terrific honor. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been, it's been a fun journey, fun journey so far. Well, certainly it's it's deserving. I mean, the the company with LifeScan, and maybe for folks that aren't familiar with LifeScan, maybe just tell them a little bit about more about the company. I mean, I know I mentioned at the beginning what you guys are doing for folks with diabetes, but if maybe you could share some about your mission and some of the things you're working on would be great. Yeah, sure. No, and, and thanks uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about LifeScan. So, um, yeah, like you mentioned, you know, uh, we really help patients uh, living with diabetes, and and we go through the full spectrum. So, LifeScan is a is a carve-out from Johnson and Johnson, and uh, we have been as a standalone organization over the last uh, two years now, and and really we took LifeScan now to the next step, um, really enhancing kind of everything around uh, connectivity, um, or digital health and partnerships. Um, that's what you see more and more of LifeScan now, really trying to go. Uh, beyond diabetes and pretty much wellness uh, uh, for a patient. And it goes with the, the spectrum of uh, digital app, connectivity, data, and bringing everything together for a patient. So that, that's really what, what we are aiming for, our mission. And uh, as I mentioned, since we became like a standalone organization over the last two years, we've been really full speed ahead to make sure that we can deliver on those promises. Yeah, you guys are doing some amazing stuff, and there's some really cool technology you guys are working on. And I know you're a global company as well. Uh, you know, I'm curious. You know, this this past year has been interesting for everybody. But as a as somebody leading IT for a global organization, um, you know, talk a little bit about how that's impacted you guys and what that journey's been like over the last you know six to nine months. Yeah, it's been. I mean, like I think every company or every person in the world, it's been an interesting journey, a learning experience. Um, the good thing, I would say, uh, very quickly with LifeScan, uh, we implemented kind of some of the cloud technologies uh, um, and a lot of different aspects in tech to really enable us to kind of quickly move to this kind of new remote world. Uh, and it really paid off. So um, to be much more agile, to be uh, faster, uh, to really enable pretty much the organization to work remote from, you know, from one day to another. And over the last, yeah, pretty much six to nine months, that's what we have been doing. Um, I think there's been minimal disruption to the business because of all the things we invested prior to that. Um, obviously, sometimes we still miss the interactions and the face-to-face, -face. Um, but it's been it's been a journey, and and I think we are we are not out of the woods yet. So I think that journey will stay for. Yeah, and I'm interested about that. I mean the. With all the investments, you mentioned you guys have been kind of on the forefront and you've really been pushing and driving that digital transformation, you know, efforts within the company. You know, of all the investments you guys made pre-pandemic, what's, has there been one that's really, that you've looked back on and said, you know, thank goodness we, we took the time and got that done ahead of time and it's really paid big dividends. What would you say is the, probably one of the best efforts you guys have made? I would say the one that maybe when we did it, we didn't realize the benefit just after the facts of the pandemic, but I would say the, all the investment in the cloud, um, uh, it's the one that actually really paid off. So, um, because as I mentioned, the fact that we are 98% cloud-based uh, and that's how we invested, that was our strategy, um, it really enabled us um, not only navigate the pandemic in terms of enabling the organization to work remote and, and all those things, but it also enabled us to really be much more agile as an organization, uh, much faster in responding to customer needs, whether it's patients, physicians, HPs, uh, and you name it, because the technology is there now to really kind of quick pilot uh, 
a certain aspect of what we are trying to achieve, drive quickly connectivity with some of our partners, and, and get quick results back. So all of those investments, which maybe in the beginning we didn't always realize kind of the benefit of it, I think really paid off now the last, um, I would say, 12 months, um, and even outside of the aspect of the pandemic. Yeah. Well, and I know you've you've stressed, we've talked before and you've talked about, uh, you know, the honor of being nominated for the CIO of the Year Award, but how much of that is really a credit to the team you guys have built and what you guys have put together from a culture standpoint. But what has that been like? Have we just kind of gone through this? I know you've, you've spent a lot of time and have focus on maintaining that company culture. You mentioned you kind of missed the water cooler talk and those things that, that you typically have in an office setting, but what have you guys done to try and maintain that you know, the level of support you give to your teams and kind of have that, that culture and that environment still persist, even though people might be working remote? Yeah, I would say that the few things we did, and, and I give a lot of credit also to our uh, communications team to really make sure that we do it uh, consistently, but it's been a lot about communicate, communicate, and communicate. Uh, it's created this water cooler kind of concept, even in this remote world. Um, uh, leadership sessions, uh, um, lead by example, show the organization exactly what we are doing, share the quick wins. Um, a lot of those things that really make sure that they all feel being still part of the team, uh, irrespectively of you know working from home and not being all in the office, um, and and being very consistent with the messaging about our mission, our priorities as an organization, and and what are we trying to achieve, and really also get patient feedback. HTTP feedback and share that with the rest of the company. So I think all those aspects make sure that, you know, all employees around the world, they still be, they still feel like one life scan, uh, be part of the family and, and they are all on, 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 the, on the same mission. I would say. Yeah. And it's, it's not been easy. I think it's, it's interesting. I don't really love the term, the kind of new normal terminology, but I think it's a, you know, as we're looking out into kind of the future and where we go from here, you know, from your perspective, Miguel, I mean, what does that look like? What do you think technology looks like and kind of the work world looks like, you know, post-pandemic or just moving out into the future? What are going to be some of the lasting changes you think that are coming from this and where do you think we go from here? Uh, I would say, I mean, I look at them a couple of aspects. I think the, from an enterprise collaboration and really, you know, like, employees working, working in the enterprise, I believe that people are realizing now that maybe you don't always have to jump on a plane and go somewhere and you can do things different. While before, just the, the concept of having a like you know, a brainstorming session remotely was uh, on a video was kind of a tough, a tough take. Now I think for, for a lot of people, it's, it's like, okay, this actually can happen. You don't need to also jump on a plane and go somewhere. So that, that from an enterprise standpoint, that's what I would say, I think are going to be one of the lasting changes. Uh, from, uh, you know, how do we work with our patients, physicians, PBMs, and all of that? I think the, the, what's going to drive in the future, the thing that's coming up, it's like, how do we bring everything together in the sense of let's really put the patients and the end consumers in, 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 at the center of everything we do? And how do we bring all this data together, connectivity together, uh, digital experience together? You know, I always say the best technology is the invisible one. I mean, I don't, it came from me, it came from someone that was much smarter than me. But I think it's true, the fact that at the end of the day, uh, that's what we have to aim and make sure that we put the consumer at the center of everything we do. Yeah, and that's, and that's really, I know a lot of the mission at LifeScan is to, for folks that are living with diabetes and working that it's, they can do everything anybody else would do and go about their normal lives and not be impeded or impaired by, by that, that that medical um, diagnosis they've got. I mean, what's what's next kind of on the radar screen for LifeScan and your products and services where you guys are going and striving towards for that patient care? What does that look like for you guys? Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of things important that we are doing, um, and, and some of them are public, some of them are not public, but uh, for the ones that are public, it's really, I mean, you've seen that we are really working on a, on a new CGM device, continuous close monitoring, um, and that's, that's really going to be a, a terrific thing as, as we are progressing in this journey with all digital experience. Um, also working through a lot of different partnerships uh, to make sure that indeed we are providing kind of the full spectrum of the uh, uh, thinking with the patient in mind. So at the end of the day, a patient that leaves with 
diabetes not only has diabetes, has other things going on in their life, and it's really about how can we help them for that. So working a lot through partnerships, uh, make sure we have an holistic view, uh, getting a lot of the data in a secure way that we can really provide personalized feedback to those patients and and and, and customers, whether it's physicians, BBMs, and the like. Uh, that's really kind of the priority that we have, um, part of kind of the overall digital strategy, which is uh, been, it's been going on for for the last couple of years. And the terrific thing about LifeScan is that we have tremendous expertise. Um, we have a long history, almost 20 million patients uh, using our platforms. So we can really, we have a fantastic foundation actually to really take that to the next level. So that's really what's terrific. No, that's great. I mean, you guys have a great organization. There's some great solutions there, and you've obviously built a, a great team and are and doing some amazing things. And uh, I think the nomination that you got to be a finalist in that, that award category definitely speaks to that. So, Miguel, for folks that want to find out more about LifeScan or maybe want to connect with you directly, where's the best place for them to go? Uh, the usual, obviously, LifeScan.com says, uh, says a lot about that. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty active on on, on those social networks. So um, that's really how they will reach out. And, and I'm pretty active again on those areas. So whatever they want to know more, and I'm happy to come back and talk a little bit more about well, the specific things that we are doing in the future. So um, any channel is good for me. That's terrific. Well, Miguel, thanks so much for joining us today, buddy. We appreciate it. And good luck in the, uh, the award season here. And thank you guys, too, for joining us again for another Tech Talk. If you guys want to see more episodes like this, you can visit auditmax.com, where they have a full library of all the interviews. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you next time.